Canopy broke first. Canopy broke first. Forces drove down number 10, 11 no longer being. You know, it's amazing that forces drove down 10. They were already there, aren't they? Then we see the break. So now this is a compression. I'm sorry. This is compressed. Number 11 is crushed right about here. This uh, is still pinned on top of the, uh, the pylon or pier. As this slides down, it's going to start ripping out the bottom. Since it's pinned, 11's pinned, it's going to start ripping out the bottom of the post tension bar in it. So it leans forward a little bit. There we go. Still has to finish hitting one more time before it makes a shift over here. Stay focused here. Okay, now it changed a little bit. Ah, great. Let it be a backup. All right, I want to show you guys that uh, this actually has four post tension bars in it. Two and two. Two on top of each side by side and two side by side here. Remember, they're uh, 12 inch plates. Uh, eight by twelves. This is a number member number ten. We're gonna get to that right now. All right. So number ten has uh, four of the uh, two and a half inch bars. Number eleven has one of the three and quarter, three and three quarter inch bars. The kips on number eleven are two hundred and eighty kips. Kips on number ten are 389 kips. It's put into a compressive state. The number 10 is. What I'm going to show you is that number 10 appears to be more than just a toy. It's not just uh, in tension. It's also in compression. This is counterintuitive, isn't it? So what is number 10's job? To hold the top, is this 389 kips just to hold the top of number 10 and the, uh, I'm sorry, is to hold the canopy and the lower deck together? Is that the intent of this 22 foot long bar, bar at 389 kips? Now the other bar, number 11, are 33 and 33 and 2 quarter inches and they're getting 280 kips. This is getting a total of 389 kips times 4. That's a lot of load going into a, 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 a member that's supposed to be in tension. Um, I don't know the loads on this bridge, but it appears that that would be counteract, counter to, counteracting its ability to, to, to want to be in tension. Number 10 here is getting 389 kips times four, four pieces. That's a lot of forces. So what I'm going to try to play with here, we're going to pull the video up, but it appears the cracks here and here. Let's go ahead and put the failure starting from number 10 as a result of number 10, creating so much stress here. It's pulling down on this top. Um, let's call it a plate. It's a blister bar, but these disintegrated pretty much. So we'll work with this one. Let's consider this a, a, like a steel plate. The forces are 389 kips per four. And then we have the other excessive amount here, all excessive. Uh, we have the added amount here. Hmm, we got a break here. So what happens if we have a bow at the bottom deck bowing down, if it happens to deflect downward? Well, we get an opening here. We should get, we'd like to see some breaks here. And, um, hmm, we'd love to see some breaks right there as it was bowing. Now, as this bows down, we have a break that we can easily create in our tubes. We still have the tubes. It's still available to break. This load, if this comes down and this stays solid like that, it'll, it'll bow down just enough to break it. This changes the force, gives it a shock load, if you will, and the uh, empty ductworks. And the empty ductworks and existing ductworks that are ungrouted. The C1 and C2, it's correction, C2 and C3. They also get a shock load, but 
apparently they if this thing is bowing down that you would it would already be at the top of the uh those ducks if you can imagine if the if it's sitting on top of the cable at that point nevertheless you have this only one foot of canopy and we now have to deduct the diameter of the post tension rods um the duct work and of course the rods also um that's this direction hmm so we like what happens if we get a break in here well you'd like to see a break something happen here we, we don't have a I don't have a primary break inside here. I've got it in the ductwork. I want to put it out here now. And how do I get it out there? Again, if this is a plate, this is acting as a solid plate, as the forces are, are, are this is deflecting down, it's also deflecting down this solid plate. Let's call it a steel plate and help you visualize it better. It creates the shearing or breaking tension moment inside those tubes. When I say tension, I mean the literal form of a breaking tension. And once it's broken, this is really, this no longer can make it out to number 11, which I've said a few times, can't make it out to 11. So it's comes, it comes, it drives down to here. And we have our, uh, the loads transferring from here to here. And they resolve themselves right about there. Break, break, this bending. Now watch this. I'm actually, I'm, I'm totally against thinking that this was uh, this broke here unless you got a camera to show me so I'm willing to change but I'm totally against it right now because we have this in the video sitting on top of the pier on the pylons this part here so this was just a hinge as I stated I did a mock-up of cardboard to show you guys it's late and I just want to get this video out to you so I'm just going with this so break break this is this accelerates downwards as it's falling downwards this is still on top of the pier, but this is not on the pier. So it pulls away, tearing away. Hmm. It's still leaving. This comes down with the deck. As it falls down, this bottom half still comes. This acts as a hinge. It rotates over. As it's rotating over, this when it breaks free. At that point, the gravity pulls it free. It starts falling down. As it's falling down, it starts ripping the... Uh, as this rotates over, I'm sorry, this falls over. I got to do a video for you guys to show you the, the. So we have the two down there. That's one and three quarter. That's the 280 kips. 280 kips. We have number 11, 280 kips. They both are pulling at the same rate on each side of the bridge. You know, again, this engineering is so crazy on this structure that we're using common sense, but obviously they uh they common sense got thrown out the window a long time ago with this design and structure so again i i don't know right i don't know the uh i had it as a as a sheer brace but this structure it's ridiculous what what whatever they can be thinking so as you notice number four and number nine and of course number 12 and 1 have no post tensioning in them number four compression this is under compression yet it has the cables in it again i think it was for transporting and also for a shear brace although they removed it as soon as it was the system was put in place which implies that well you know either they're, they're, it's just stupid because it would still could rack so it wasn't designed for that if they removed the post tensioning off of it so then we have to assume one thing left. It was designed for the overhang, the cantilever. And once they removed the loads, a uh, crack showed up, and then they decided to put it back on again to do the uh, to resolve cracks, uh, you know, to addressing cracks. My opinion on that that they were crack addressing at that point, not that, because of retensioning. Reten when it clearly the plans don't say detention, retention. That just doesn't make sense, does it? Again, we have that these are not supposed to be removed, that this was supposed to be bridging in here, blocking, I'm sorry, let me use this. Temporary support of main span section shall stay in middle of the cross section during SPMT transportation. Temporary supports were supposed to stay in during that transportation. Stress deck long longitudinal tendons D1 first, that would be two D1s, and then canopy DC2. Then you're going to come back to uh, stress members two and number 11. And then back to the deck, you're going to do D2, D3, D4, D5, and D6. 
and you're going to work your way up to your stress bottom slab transverse post tendons. Now you're going to go walk across it. You're going to go down the length of this. And stress post tension tendon bars in number uh, three and ten. Take note, let's go back here. C2. C3 is not done yet. It's only down the center right now. Okay. Five and eight. Post tension uh, five, eight. And then six and seven. You start it from the outside and you work your way in. We come back to, then you go, after you finish that, then you go back to the canopy and stress canopy longitudinal tendons C3. That's on the outside of the uh, center of the center of the of the truss system. So C3 would be so here's C2, C1 is closer, C1 is empty voids, C3 would be next to C2 going out towards the outside. And then we have a couple more post tendon members in there, which clearly show that these plans 2017 are a little bit odd because now they're not addressing that besides um, at the very end of the uh, post-tensioning. And we'll get to that. This is the ripping, ripping out I'm referring to. And there's the uh, post-tension bar. I have no idea what that is. Um, part of the post-tensioning bar system somehow. All right, you see clearly this is, the, this is actually the bottom deck. This is the canopy. This is number 11, but this is not sitting on number 11. 11 is, the, the canopy, so 11 has uh, already been sheared, if you will, and it's sitting on top and uh, butting up against the canopy. I'll explain that all in a moment. So if I can get this enlarged a little bit, that's the top part, all the, in fact, there's the, uh, the J-hook design of the, of the uh, reinforcement. Wow. Um, it's not even buckled backwards, if you will. So if it was shearing outwards, this was a hinge effect going on. It would at least kink this, right? But we don't have that crushing and kinking going on. We've got hinging. And I've said in numerous videos that I didn't post, if you notice this drag marks here and here. So at one point, it, it, the bridge, as I said, it was uh, pulled back in. It was pulled in. And at one point, the other the south side was pushing away. At that point, it pushed back, and this is when it hit the wall. So it's not dragging from the top down, it appears. It appears that it was pushed, pulled off, pulled off, pulled off of the pedestal. I'm going to call this the pedestal at this point. Um, and re repositioned back against the wall about this point. This, that is considering that this to be plumb. If it is tapered, then all bets are off. So in other words, if it's like this, then it clearly can fall and not rub and then it would rub again, but this appears to be the same width and we won't bother looking at the plans for that. So as it broke free, and here's the bottom of number 11 right there, still embedded, still embedded. So as it broke free, it was still, it accelerated faster than this uh, number, the best in the canopy and number 11 together. As it accelerated, it started ripping out the bottom of uh, the number 11, ripping this post-tension bar out. When it finally came to rest, it was finished pulling out all of its members, or it finished it in the air, and then when this followed down in pursuit, um, this is the profile you get. Uh, so you need this to accelerate faster than this to start ripping it out. So it's giving you an idea of how it works. Now over here, um, this 11 is pretty much intact. I am not seeing failure here at all, just a hinge. So I'm back to failure happening at the canopy with this, these forces pressing in, causing a break here. We see a huge uh, um, center section missing, bleh, missing here. There's our banner. If we can even see the strap across there, and I didn't reposition itself. It's, the banner's not that heavy, is it? All right. There's my no grouting I speak of all the time. If there's grout in there, then uh, old school, I'd be a monkey's uncle. I really never said that. Again, so we have the break in the bridge deck. And I think this is the original break in the bridge deck. Along with this right here. Uh, the canopy. So we got a break one, break two, or break one, break two. And I'll uh, get to that.
there's our ripping through, our shearing of the post tension bar. You can even figure out what, what point it was uh, ripping through because this is further down than that one. You know, the angle. You could, we could recapture that angle going back in. At this point, it's hit the deck at the same time. There's nothing else to rip out, and we're done. This again, this is the top, I think it's the top of 11 pretty much. I don't see any buckling happen. Again, there's the banner, and this is the top of 11 as it goes through the uh, underside of the node, which uh, forces again. As you can see, I have, well, that was a like a turning moment or something I got going on there. And I think I put this in a previous video. This is loaded. We know that now at 389 kips. It's got more kips than anything. Yet it's supposed to be in tension. So now it's pretty much, well, by default, by default, you've made it a compressive member. You're counteracting your own tension forces on it. 